Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiteboard Finance. My name is Marco and I'm here to help you master your money and build your wealth. In today's video, we're gonna talk about why savers are losers in this interest rate economy in 2020 and beyond. So being able to save money has always been looked at as a positive virtue. It's always like a penny saved is a penny earned, patience is a virtue, etc., etc. It's always been a sign of a responsible person to be able to think ahead, save their money, delay gratification, and then buy things later on in life that they really want. However, we're going to talk about uh, two reasons why savers are losers. Uh, we're going to touch on inflation. We're going to touch on taxes. We're going to talk about how interest rates dictate our behavior, and we're going to talk about what to do about this scenario. So stay tuned. So the first reason savers are losers in this environment is because inflation. Inflation is a silent killer of purchasing power. So what purchasing power is, is basically saying, hey, in 1987, you can buy a gallon of milk for $1.50. In 2020, that same gallon of milk costs $3.50. So that is what we call inflation. And that is measured by CPI. So CPI stands for Consumer Price Index. So here's an actual chart of CPI uh, going back a few years here. So you can see that the CPI in January of 2020 was 2.5%, meaning that all those goods that are measured in this screenshot went up 2.5% during that period. So here's a perfect example. Say you work a W-2 job, you work 8 to 5, you know, white collar, blue collar, doesn't matter, and you get a 2% raise at the end of the year, okay? And you're sitting there thinking to yourself, great, I got 2% raise. Well, you actually just lost 0.5% in purchasing power if the CPI did indeed increase 2.5%. So here's another example. If you're a diligent saver, and to stay in the theme of this video, say you have a savings account earning you 1% annual percentage yield, but the CPI was 2%. The money that's sitting in this account is actually losing 1% in purchasing power. So you are a saver, but at the same time, you are a loser. Loser! Let's get on to the next step as to why savers are losers. And Sorry, I've never done that before in my life. I just felt like doing that. I wasn't like a jock in high school, like, you know, grabbing people by their underwear and like lifting them up into the, never mind. So the second reason savers are losers is because the interest that you earn in your accounts, whether it's your savings, your checking, your money market, anywhere you're earning interest is going to be taxed at your regular income tax bracket. So most people watching this video are probably going to be in the 22 or 24% tax bracket, unless you're you know, single making a bunch of money, good for you, congratulations. Um, or you could be ultra wealthy, maybe Jeff Bezos is watching this video, shout out to Amazon Prime. Um, but here's a real world example. So say for example, you are a couple saving up for a down payment on a house and you have 100 grand sitting in a money market account at 1.5%. So you're earning 1.5% annual percentage yield. It's 100 grand. All the math wizards here, how much interest are these people going to make in one year? You basically just take these two numbers, multiply them together, and voila, this couple has earned $1,500 in interest. But wait, did they really earn $1,500? If you remember, it's going to be taxed at their income bracket. Say for example, they're in the 22% income tax bracket, 1,500 times 0.22 equals $330 taxable event. Now, to find out what they effectively made as their rate, they didn't make 150, okay? Because you have to subtract 330 from 1,500, giving you 1,170. You gotta divide that by 100 grand. 100K equals 0 0.0117. You move the decimal place over uh, two places, effectively giving them a 1.17% return. Big difference between 1.17 and 1.50, right? That's, that's almost a third, okay? That's because you have to have a taxable event. Now, if these people invested in something like a long-term capital gain, they invested in stocks or whatever, and their income level for their income tax bracket was 22% right here, their equivalent in a long-term capital gain would have been 15%, which is a big difference. Some people actually fall into a 0% long-term capital gain tax. So that's just something to think about. The 15% is obviously 7% uh, less than the 22 
So next, we're gonna talk about interest rates and how they dictate our behavior as savers. Okay, so third, this isn't necessarily why savers are losers, but it's a reason how interest rates actually are a form of control. They dictate our behavior. So let's talk about this. So when interest rates are low, it makes more sense to invest. So think about our previous example. When you have 100 grand in the bank and interest rates are super, super, super low, and after the taxes that we talked about, you're really making 1.17% on a 1.5% money market account, which is nothing. Remember we talked about CPI and inflation? These people are actually losing basically 90 something basis points or almost 1% to inflation every year uh, that their money is in that money market account. Now, when inflation is up, it makes sense, or excuse me, when interest rates are up, it makes sense to save. So let's say, for example, that money market account, instead of being 1.5%, let's say it was 10% and CPI was 2.5%. Uh, Obviously, this is almost a risk-free 10% uh, earnings on their money, which is great, okay? Now, with low interest rates, uh, that's inflated assets uh, all across the world, but definitely across the United States. So let's take a look at a real-life example of a mortgage, okay? The reason real estate prices are so ridiculously high at the time of this recording, they're pretty much at all-time highs, is because interest rates have been low for years, okay? So if you take a look at this chart, this is what we call a zero interest uh, rate policy from December of 2008 to December of 2015. This chart is actually showing the effective federal funds rate, which is essentially how banks lend money to each other and also how they borrow it from the Federal Reserve. That's pretty much the rate at which they're getting it at, okay? So if you look at the chart from December of 2008 to December of 2015, interest rates have been almost at zero this entire time for seven years. They crept back up and they're obviously going down now again. So with interest rates being low, think about it. If uh, Jack and Jill wanted to buy a house and they could only afford a $200,000 uh, mortgage when interest rates are, let's call it 10%, um, that's gonna affect their purchasing power. Now, let's say rates are uh, 2.5% on a 30-year mortgage, they can actually squeeze a lot more house out of that, in fact, in inflating all real estate prices. So it's almost like an inverse relationship. Interest rates go up, asset prices go down. Interest rates go down, asset prices goes up because it's cheap to borrow that money, okay? So interest rates, remember this, it's a form of control and it pretty much dictates our investment behavior. So with all this being said, let's move on to what we're gonna do about it and how to prevent uh, from being a loser if you are a saver. Okay, so earlier in the presentation, we talked about how capital gains are taxed differently than your regular income tax bracket and a whole bunch of other stuff. These are gonna be four examples of where you can park your money as opposed to just keeping it in a savings or a money market account. Now, before I suggest these things, I wanna make it clear that you should definitely have liquid cash or liquid money available to you at any uh, given notice just because life happens and I highly recommend that everyone has a three to six month emergency fund. However, for the people that do have the 100 grand sitting around and a three to six month emergency fund, these options may be more viable for you. So our first thing, we have paper. Paper is essentially just you know stocks, bonds, mutual funds, things that I talk about on this channel. Um, you can check out M1 Finance in the link below if you wanna look at that. Um, that's a way to invest your money in those things. Second is commodities. So if you uh, remember my previous videos on what is money and you know uh, what form money can take, um, commodities used to be money. So we have uh, cattle, salt, uh, natural gas, oil, gold, silver. This is what we call commodities. Typically, gold has been an excellent inflation, uh, hedge against inflation, uh, which we talked about earlier in this video. So it may make sense or behoove you to have some precious metals in your portfolio. Uh, real estate. Real estate typically keeps up with inflation. Uh, yes, it goes up. Yes, it goes down. But if it's income producing real estate, meaning that you have a tenant um, or if it's you know a rental property or a retail um, commercial real estate space or office space or whatever, um, self-storage, as long as it's earning income and keeping up with inflation and producing you cash flow, that could be somewhere else to park your money. Uh, and then finally, this is obviously the most risky, but you can start a business. So whether that's buying an LLC or whether that's starting your own company or buying a franchise or whatever, 
At that point, you're essentially creating a job for yourself unless you know how to manage it. Um, but starting a business could be a more effective way um, and a more tax-friendly way of sheltering that money. So I know that uh, this was kind of a quick ending to this video, and if you are a saver, that is a good thing. Um, however, you just have to be cognizant of inflation, taxes, and other things that eat away at your purchasing power. So if you stayed this long, thank you so much. You're the real MVP. If you got value out of this video, please share it with one friend, share it on social media, send it to your um, grandpa who has money stuffed in his mattresses that thinks you know he's doing the right thing. So thank you so much, everybody, and have a prosperous day. Yeah.